Good morning. Let's start this morning with prayer. Father, we thank you. We ask for your anointing and favor, Lord God. Continue to bless us as we learn from your words, Lord, today. In Jesus' name. The Revenge by Brothers, Genesis 34, 24 through 31. Quite short. <clears throat> and all who went out of the gate of the city listened to Hamor and his son Shechem. And every male were circumcised, all who went out of the gate of the city. Now, it came about on the third day when they were in pain that two of Jacob's sons, Simon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, each took his sword and came upon the city and undetected and killed every male, including Hamor and his son Shechem. They killed them with their sword, then took Dinah from Shechem's house and returned to their camp. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and spoiled the city because they had defiled their sister. They took their sheep, their oxen, their asses, and their which was in the city and that which was in the field, and all their wealth and all their little ones and their wives took them captive and spoiled every all that was in the house. Now, then Jacob said to Simon and said, and Simon and Levi, you have brought trouble on me by making me obnoxious, stink to the Canaanites and Perizzites and people living in the land. We are few in number, and if they join forces against me and attack me, I and my household will be destroyed. By they, but they replied, should we have, should he have treated our sister like a prostitute? Wow. So the story goes, the tragedy of one wrong snowballing into massacre of the city. Wow. Do you take revenge in your hands by your impulse? And no, no, you shouldn't. Um, Calvin writes about the whole incident regarding the Hamor and Shechem. If we reflect on the true import of circumcision, it will easily appear that they were too much addicted to their own selfish interests. Therefore, to change their religion so carelessly betrays on their part a gross contempt of God. So Calvin is more interested in, yeah, it's one thing to have a self-interest about gaining wealth, but really change your entire God for that? So Calvin really thinks that uh, this was ridiculous because they were mm, changing God for the sake of profit. It's just like saying that it doesn't matter, you know, what kind of offer you had, but change your religion just like that for just immediate profit. It's wrong, according to Calvin. And then the word they use is when they killed or slaughtered. It wasn't murder, like fair fight. They were groaning in bed and they went and slaughtered them like animals, like pigs, right? Like lambs. I mean, these are, these are very seasoned butchers and they know where to cut right here. And they don't have to fight, just hold them down cut it and move on, They'll bleed to death. They said uh, medically, you only have a couple of liters of blood and if you drain one liter of blood, then you start dying. So you don't have to cause pain, you just bleed to death. Now, how can two men uh, do all that? So obviously, Simon and Levi, the Diana's brother, born of the same mother, right? Uh, but the Reuben and Judah and all these people are not mentioned. Uh, they were somehow involved, or the man, uh, the slave, just like uh, Abraham had a lot of soldiers, because there are a lot of helping hands. They had a lot of men helping and actually rooting the city. 
wow, that's just so horrible. <laughs> when he talks about taking the spoil or looting. I remember uh, living through 1992 riot, right? Saigu, 429, April 29. Wow, looters were merciless. They actually came into every store, breaking the window, taking whatever they want. Um, and I felt so sorry for the owners of the store who worked their lifetime to build it up as a business. What right do they have? Right? They just come and just take everything, you know. They go into 7-Eleven and take all the cigarettes, and all the liquors, and and like go into a department store and take all the expensive bags, TV. I mean, they were running. They thought it was it was fun, um, but that's what they did. They killed all the mail, took all the spoils, spoiled the city, right? The pulpit commentary says something very interesting. He said, in Jacob's sons, that strange admixture of religious zeal, carnal passion, and lofty faith, and low crafted existed with form so large a portion of the character of Patriarch himself. Wow, strong words. So although Jacob rebukes them, the same kind of DNA tendency was with them. Because strange mixture of religious zeal, carnal passion, lofty faith, low craft exist. So although very lofty in his thinking, but he was also very deceitful. And he thought he could get away. Right? Now the way that Jacob responds to Simon and Levi also tells something about him. Instead of talking about, how could you do that? You kill these innocent people. How dare you, right? Do not reprimand them. He said, rather, he said, you have trouble on me and making me obnoxious, stink, repugnant to the Canaanites and Perizzites. And now they're going to kill us, all of us. So Jacob's timidity led him to think first of the danger that would have result from the conduct of his sons, not rebuking the sin of killing innocent people. Mm. Wow. Daily Gospel question. Do you take revenge in your own hand? What would be proper way to deal with wrong done unto you? Well, I am processing that right now as I fast. And the way that I'm processing is repenting on their behalf weeping on their behalf and releasing so that I will not have it against them. Now, that doesn't mean that I'll be going vacation with them because I'm not stupid. I'm wise, but I'm not going to have it against me. Um, the next time somehow I run into them at the market, I'll smile and bless them because I would have left all the revenge unto the Lord. I do not want to revenge on my own. It is up to the Lord. If I am innocent, clean, and I stand before God as God, <sighs> look at, honestly, Lord, if I done anything wrong, then punish me. Otherwise, I release and repent. Don't, do not take revenge on your own hand. Because... Some of those people that who did me wrong are also God's people, you know, and Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Whoever bless you will be blessed. Whoever curse you will be cursed. And I don't want to be in that line of cursing them so that curse will come upon me. There will be double whammo for me. Not only they did wrong, but by cursing them, I'll be cursed. So I don't want that. One bad thing done to me is enough. So I release it. And I said to God, release it, Lord God. I, revenge does not belong to me. Look what happened when these men took the revenge on their own. Ah, how do you deal with all the blood in their hands? No, really. How do you deal with killing innocent people in their bed and justify that? Well, they shouldn't treat my sister as a prostitute. Really? So you kill these men who had nothing to do with your daughter, your sister getting raped? That's just obnoxious.
you know, that is so nonsensical. And yet they just define their head. That's the only way they think they're going to get away with, you know. So, Father, I just ask, give us wisdom that we will not act foolishly by trying to revenge on our own. But, Lord, it is up to you. So we give you all authority to do the revenge on our behalf, if needs to be, Lord. But your grace will cover as your grace cover for my all my wrongdoings to others, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you. See you tomorrow.